Good day everyone. Our group will discuss PDIC or the Philippine Deposit Insurance Corporation. So what is PDIC? Philippine Deposit Insurance Corporation is a government instrumentality attached to the Department of Finance created in 1963 by virtue of Republic Act 3591 to ensure the deposits of all banks which are entitled to the benefits of insurance. PDIC was created on June 22, year 1963 to provide depositor protection and help maintain stability in the financial system by providing permanent and continuing deposit insurance. PDIC was one of the oldest deposit insurers in the world. United States was the first one to establish deposit insurers followed by India, Norway, Dominican Republic, and Philippines. The PDIC now has the authority to help depositors have quicker access to their insured deposits should their bank close, resolve bank's problem while still open, and hasten the liquidation process for closed banks. Let's now take a look on the public policy objectives of PDIC. As amended in Section 1, Republic Act 3591, its two objectives are first, as a deposit protection, and second, for financial stability. As a depositor in protection, its objective is to promote and safeguard the interest of depositing public by way of providing permanent and continuing insurance coverage on all insured deposits. For financial stability, its objective is to strengthen the mandatory deposit insurance coverage system to generate, preserve, and maintain faith and confidence in the country's banking system and protect it from illegal schemes and machination. Next is the communication strategy of PDIC for reimbursing depositors. First, PDIC issues regular press. PDIC releases press to inform the public on the DIF or Deposit Insurance Fund, RIS, or regulatory information service or bulletins developments in the banking system and PDIC programs and initiatives. Last, PDIC hold quarterly briefing for media personnel to announce new development and provide follow-through updates on ongoing initiatives. That's all. Thank you. Good day everyone, my name is Jane Alman. For today, we will discuss the Philippine Deposit Insurance Corporation mandates and functions. So the PDIC is a government instrumentality created in 1963 by virtue of Republic Act 3591 to ensure the deposit of all banks. The PDIC exists to protect depositors by providing deposit insurance coverage for the depositing public and help promote financial stability. So, the PDIC has the following mandates. The first one is the deposit insurance. The PDIC provides a maximum deposit insurance coverage up to 500000 per depositor per bank. To pay insured deposit, the PDIC builds up to deposit insurance fund primarily through assessment of all member banks at annual flat rate of one half of 1% of their total deposit liabilities. The second one is the examination and resolution. The PDC works closely with the Banco Central ng Pilipinas or the BSP to help maintain stability in the banking system. The PDC is authorized to issue regulations to implement its charter, conduct bank examination and, and investigation to assess financial safety and soundness of banks, and their adherence in banking and deposit insurance rules and regulation, and extend financial assistance to eligible distressed banks. The third one is the receivership and liquidation. The PDAC is a statutory receiver and liquidator of closed banks. Upon order of the Monetary Board of the BSP, 
PDIC takes over closed banks, minister the assets, record in affairs, and manages and preserves these assets for the benefit of the closed bank's creditors. Under RA 108.46 or the amended PDIC Charter, a closed bank transitions seamlessly from closure to liquidation, enabling PDIC to dispose and distribute assets and settle claims of creditors in accordance with the preference and concurrence of credits as provided by the Civil Code of the Philippines. What is the PDIC's overall mandate? PDIC exists to provide deposit insurance coverage for the depositing public to help promote public confidence and stability in the economy. It ensures prompt payment of insured deposits, exercises complementary supervision of banks, adopts responsive resolution methods, and applies efficient management of receivership and liquidation function. The SPDIC, BSP Land Bank encourages rural banks a will consolidation program. The country's financial regulators are pushing for consolidation among rural banks to achieve a stronger and less fragmented banking system. Following the launch of the CPRB, PDC and the BSP are now accepting applicants for availments under the program. CPRB is a bank strengthening program specifically designed for rural banks to help enhance their viability and ability to promote financial inclusion and financial stability in their respective communities. The CPIB manifests recognition by the BSP and PDC in, co in cooperation with the Land Bank of the Philippines of rural banks' importance in providing essential services to their niche markets. The CPIB is also in the support of the government's trust for financial inclusion given the rural banks' a strategic advantage of reaching a serve and underserved and empowering them with improved access to formal financial services. PDAC President Christina Q. Arbeta encouraged rural banks to take advantage of the CPRB, especially in the face of increased competition brought about by the integration markets in the Association of Southeast Asia Nation or ASEAN region. Rural banks availing the CPRB are set to benefit from several support services and regulatory incentives to improve financial strength, enhance viability, strengthen management and governance, generate synergies and economies of scale, and expand market reach. It is envisioned that the resulting bank from the CPRB shall have a risk-based capital adequacy ratio, or the RBCAR, of at least 12%, and a combined unimpaired capital of at least 100 million. The program welcomes any group of at least five rural banks whose head offices or majority of the branches are located in the same region or area. Rural banks whose head office is located in a nearby region may also be included, provided that the program objectives are met. The CPRB, the Countryside Financial Institution Enhancement Program, will provide finding assistance for financial advisory services, business process improvement services, and capacity building support services. These include training on credit evaluation and administration, audit and internal control, personal management, accounting or record keeping, treasury and information technology, and governance. Regulatory incentives from the BSP may be also availed as part of CPIB's program support. So now, we are talking about Board of Directors. As specified in the PDIC character and other existing laws, rules, and regulations, no person shall be appointed as member of the board unless he is a Filipino citizen. It also has to be has a good moral character and of unquestionable integrity and responsibility, and who is recognized of competence in economic, banking finance, law and management administration and also it has to be 30 years 35 years of age so now we are talking about board of directors as specified in the pdic character and other existing laws 
rules and regulation, no person shall be appointed as the member of the board unless he is a Filipino citizen. It also has to be a good character and unquestionable integrity and responsibility, and who is recognized of competence in economic, bank and finance, law, management, administration, and also at least 35 years of age. PDIC, being created by special law, shall have a board of directors composed of the following, as prescribed in its charter. First is the Secretary of Finance. The Secretary of Finance shall be the ex officio chairperson of the board without compensation. Next, the government of the Banco Central ng Pilipinas that has to be the ex officio member of the board without compensation. Third is the president of the corporation who shall be appointed by the president of the Philippines and also the president of corporation shall also serve as the vice chairman of the board. Last is the four members of the private sectors to be appointed for a term of six years by the president of the Philippines. President of the Philippines may remove any appointed member of the board of directors for any of the following reasons. Next is if the member is physically or mentally anticipated, it means if she or he cannot properly discharge his or her duties and responsibilities in a, in a capacity has lasted for more than six months. Next, if member is guilty of acts or operation, it is an illegal character of which are manifesting opposed to the aims and interests of the corporation. Next, if the members no longer possesses the qualifications specified in this act. And last, if the member does not meet the standards. It means it does not meet the standards for the performance based on the evaluation by the Governance Commission for the Government-Owned or Controlled Corporation under RA number 10149. Good day, my name is Colin A. Prades from BSBA FM2. Today, I'm going to discuss and introduce to you the Board of Directors of the Philippine Deposit Insurance Corporation. So first, let's have Mr. Carlos G. Dominguez III, which is the Chairman of the PDIC. He is also the Secretary of the Department of Finance. He has over 40 years of experience managing various organizations in the public and also private sectors. He was a shareholder and board chairman or member of over a dozen corporations across various industries such as power, agriculture, mining, banking, hospitality, real estate, and investment. He was also the cabinet secretary of the environment and natural resources and agriculture during the presidency of Corazon Aquino and the former president of Philippine Airlines and the Philippine Associates Smelting and Refining Corporation. He has a master's degree in business administration from Ateneo de Manila University and attended the executive management program at the Stanford University. And now, let's have Mr. Roberto Pitan, the Vice Chairman and President of the PTIC. He was appointed on February 3, 2017. He is currently the elected treasurer of the International Association of Deposit Insurers, a non-profit organization of deposit insurance agencies worldwide. Mr. Tan also headed the Philippines Bureau of the Treasury in 2008 up to 2012 and 2015 up to 2007. Concurrent to his position as National Treasurer, he was also officer in charge of the Department of Finance International Finance Group in 2015 to 2016. He served as an alternate member of the board of several government agencies including the Monetary Board of the Banco Central ng Pilipinas. He was also an Executive Director of the World Bank Group and Affiliates in Washington, D.C. in 2012 up to 2015 
an advisor to the executive director of the Asian Development Bank Board in 1995 to 1998 and holds a master's degree in economics from Fordham University, New York, USA, where he also pursued doctorate studies. He also holds a master's degree in business administration from the Ateneo de Manila University, where he likewise received his bachelor's degree in economics. Next is Mr. Benjamin E. Jokno, a member of PTIC and the fifth governor of the Banco Central ng Pilipinas. Mr. Jokno has been in public service for over three decades. He was the secretary of the Department of Budget and Management from 1998 to 2001 and 2016 to 2019. He served as professor of economics for 30 years at the School of Economics of the University of the Philippines, Diliman, and was recently named Professor Emeritus of the same university. He holds a doctorate degree in economics from the Syracuse University in New York and a master's degree in political economy from Johns Hopkins University. He also has master's degree in economics and in public administration from the University of the Philippines, Liman, where he also obtained his bachelor's degree in public administration. Next is Mr. Rogelio M. Kidalkiper, the Vice Chairman and Private Sector Representative of PDIC. He is a Certified Public Accountant and the Chairman and Chief Executive Officer of accounting firm Constantino Guadalquivir and Company. He has more than three decades of experience in the accounting practice. He was also a former senior partner at Saisip Gores Velayo and Company. He is Bachelor of Science in Commerce degree holder from the University of San Jose Recoletos. He also attended the top management program of the Asian Institute of Management, where he also earned his master's degree in business management. Next is Mr. Eduardo M. Pangan, a member and private sector representative of PDIC. He is also a partner at the Mendoza and Pangan Law Firm and has more than two decades of experience in corporate law, negotiating, and structuring acquisitions and divestments, investments, and joint ventures in various industries. He is also a member of the Licensing Executive Society Philippines. Attorney Pangan graduated from the Ateneo Law School in 1991 and was admitted to the Philippine Bar in 1992. He is a member of the Alliance of M&A Advisors. Last is Mr. Reynaldo F. Tanshoko, a member and private sector representative of PDIC. He is CPA lawyer by profession and an assistant government corporate counsel at the office of the government corporate counsel for 10 years from 1999 to 2009 prior to joining PDIC. He was previously a legal officer at the Strategic Investment Development Corporation or CIDCOR from 1987 to 1999 and served as agent of the National Bureau of Investigation and worked at the General Auditing Office, now Commission on Audit. Attorney Tan Shoko was also a former branch lawyer at the Philippine National Bank. He graduated with a bachelor's degree in commerce from the University of the East and earned his law degree from San Beda College. He holds a master's degree in senior management, which he earned from the Graduate School of the Ateneo de Manila University. Let's move to the powers and duties of the President of PDIC. This statement is under Section 3. Powers and duties of the President are the following. To sum it up, the power and duties of the President is to ensure the effectiveness of the board in fulfilling PDIC's mandate to protect depositors and contribute to financial stability. 
the President shall be assisted by a Vice President, and other officials whose appointment and removal for cause shall be approved. And now, let's proceed to the powers and responsibilities of the Board of Directors of the PDIC. And these are the following. The Board of Directors is primarily responsible for the governance of the corporation. They are the government's agent in pursuing economic growth and development within the ambit of the corporation's jurisdiction. The Board of Directors is vested with legal capacity and authority to exercise all corporate powers and conduct all the businesses of the corporation. The Board of Directors is expected to ensure and undertake the following, like for example, Define the corporation's values and standards. Act as an effective and independent check on management. And carry out the mandate of PDIC as provided in its charter. They are also expected to foster the long-term success of PDIC in a manner consistent with its fiduciary responsibility. That's all. Thank you. I'm going to discuss the source of funds of PDIC. Philippine Deposit Insurance Corporation, PDIC, according to President Jose Sino Grales, that a proposed 14 billion loan from the Banco Central ng Pilipinas, or BSP, is a prudent founding strategy that will prevent the corporation's deposit insurance funds, or DIF, from running into future founding risks. He also clarified that loan will be used to pay out deposit insurance claims in 12 banks placed under PDIC receivership by Monetary Board. So, PDIC should be financially strong and capable to service all valid claims for deposit assurance. However, it is a business decision giving the choices of immediately spending PDIC's resources in borrowing long fund from the BSP. In short, DIF is the source of funds to pay out deposit insurance claims. Deposit Claims Process PDIC aims to pay valid claims as soon as possible. Prior to payout, claims are examined thoroughly. This is to protect the deposit insurance fund or DIF which is the source of insurance payments. But sometimes, depositors mistakenly assume that the payout are sourced from their own deposits. This is not the case that the payout is from the PDIC's own funds. The claim for insured deposit should be settled within 6 months from failing provided all requirements are met but the claim must be filed within 24 months after bank takeover. So, the 6 months period shall not apply if the documents of the claimant are incomplete or if the validity of the claim requires the resolution of issues of facts and law by another office, body or agency, differently or in coordination with PDIC. So, PDIC depositors may also file their claims through mail and enclose their original evidence of deposit and photocopy of one valid photo bearing ID with signature together with a duly accomplished and notarized claim from which can be downloaded from the PDIC website of www.pdic.gov.ph. So, under the settlement, there's a two phases, the takeover and claim settlement. Phase 1, takeover. Under of that, information depositors assistance, frontline depositor assistance, courtesy call with the local government unit, 
depositors, borrowers, poor room, and the distribution of control number. So under the page one takeover, information depositors assistant is the information dissemination wherein depositors inform of basic requirements in filing claim schedule of depositors poor room and claim settlement such as the distribution of forms, pacify in rate depositors, clients, and also entertain queries. So, frontline depositors assistance. Assist depositors in filling up forms. Receive duly accomplished mailing address update form for depositors not required to file deposit insurance claims. Courtesy call with the local government units such as courtesy call, attend LGU meetings, coordinate with local leaders and civic service, depositors, borrowers, poor room. There's a topic that should be discussed in this situation, like rule of PDIC as receiver, insurer, and liquidator, settlement of loan obligation, application of the maximum deposit insurance coverage, and the steps, procedures, in filling a claim, and so on. Lastly, distribution of control number. The control number are preferable distributed in venues other than bank premises. Distribute query number, assist the elderly and person with the disabilities. So, in phase 2 claim settlement, under of that, there is a depositor's assistant under public assistance department and call center with toll number. So, in public assistance department, it, it's about response to queries, requests, complaints, and client feedback. So, in call center with toll number, there is a assist assist public assistance hotline such as 8414630 or 8414631 the toll number the toll number there's a pre number hotline such as 1/800 1888 number 2 email letters this will be help the depositors to visit the email address of PDIC. Lastly, client feedback survey. So in this in this part, where there a clarification to those information and services that have been tackled. So that's all. Thank you. The PDIC is the statutory receiver and liquidator of closed banks. PDIC takes over banks ordered closed by monetary board. So when should the depositors of a closed bank file his claim with PDIC? So depositors of said closed banks are advised to present general requirements for filing deposit insurance claims such as accomplished claim forms, original evidence of deposit, and two valid photo bearing IDs with signature representative. The depositors of the closed insured banks has 24 months from date of bank takeover to file his deposit insurance claims. But the PDIC will not accept claims which are incomplete or lacking in requirements. The claims may be filed with the liquidator of the closed banks within 60 days from publication of notice of closure. However, payment of said claim will depend on the bank's available assets and approval of the liquidation court. The schedule of payment behind the 500,000 pesos maximum insurance should be based on the priorities set by law. The standard procedure for claim settlement may not apply if the closed bank fails to property turn over to the PDIC, the closed banks completes records. So without the complete records, 
the PDIC will not be able to conduct the validation process for the for the bank deposits. Let's now discuss how the PDIC handles joint accounts. Based on the charter provision of PDIC, a joint account regardless of whether the conjunction and or is used shall be insured separately from any individually owned deposit accounts. Second, if the account is held jointly by two or more natural persons or by two or more juridical persons or entities, the maximum insured deposit shall be divided into as many equal shares as there are individuals, juridical persons or entities unless a different sharing is stipulated in the document of deposit. Third, if the account is held by a juridi juridical person or entity jointly with one or more natural persons, the maximum insured deposit shall be presumed to belong entirely to such juridical person or entity. Let's now take a look on a given example that shows computation of insured and uninsured amount and breakdown of insured and uninsured amount. Juan de la Cruz has three accounts. One is under his name alone or the account number one and the other two are jointly maintained by him and Maria or Pedro de la Cruz which are the accounts number two and three. For the savings deposit individually owned by Juan de la Cruz or account number one, he is entitled to a separate deposit insurance of 500,000. The uninsured deposit is 100,000. For the two accounts or the account numbers two and three, which are jointly maintained by him and Maria or Pedro de la Cruz, each joint account is considered equally shared among co-depositors unless otherwise indicated in the deposit document. The insurance coverage of 500000 will apply to the sum of shares of each co-depositor in the insured portion of each joint deposit account. For account number 2, the maximum deposit insurance is 500,000, which shall be divided equally between Juan and Maria. The share of Juan de la Cruz is 250,000. There is no uninsured amount. For account number 3, the maximum deposit insurance is 500,000, which shall be divided equally between Juan and Pedro. The share of Juan de la Cruz is 250,000. The uninsured amount is 300,000, thus his share in the uninsured amount is 150,000. That's all. Thank you. So now the question is, what happens if the depositor of an account dies? Many banks allow their customers to name a beneficiary or set the account as payable on debt or transferable on debt to another person. If the account holder establish someone as beneficiary or POD, the bank will release the funds to name a person when it learns of the account holder's debt. After that, the financial institution typically closes the account. If the owner of the account didn't name a beneficiary or a POD, the process can get more complicated. The executor or the person who administered a person's estate when he or she dies will become responsible for using the money to repay creditors and dividing the remaining funds according to the deceased will. So, if the depositor doesn't have a deceased will, in most cases, a majority or even all money goes to their spouse and the remainder is dividing up all among their children. They contact the bank in question with proof of debt to begin the process. The debt certificate is typically accepted as proof. Banks cannot close a deceased account until the person estate has gone through probate. If the account is on pay, on that account, the bank will not freeze the account. Instead, the bank will release the funds to the name beneficiary when provided with the deceased debt certificate.
What will happen if the bank closes and the depositor is in overseas? Banks will accept such as instruction as correct, accurate, and duly authorized by you. All instruction, information, orders, requests, and communications received by the bank from you or any of your authorized representatives by whatever means. The bank will process your transaction based on the instruction you have given. The bank is entitled to take such steps in connection with or in reliance upon the instruction as the bank may in good faith consider appropriate. The following requirements are needed when filing claims. In completing requirements, the entries must on the white, green, and yellow copies. The first one is the duly accomplished claim form and the original evidence of deposit like savings passbook, certificate of time deposit, and the bank statements including the unused checks. For joint accounts, evidence of deposit should be a photocopied as many copies as there are deposit depositors to the account. So the uh, first one is the original and photocopy of two valid photo bearing identification documents with signature. One of these IDs must be driver's license, SSS or GSIS ID, senior citizen ID, passport, PRC ID, OWA or OFW ID, Siemens ID, Allen certificate of registration ID, voters ID, company or school ID, and the postal ID. And the next one is a copy of birth certificate duly certi certified by the NSO or the local civil registrar. If the depositor is below 18, the parent must be file a claim. Let's now talk about the distribution of claim forms and filing of claims of PTIC. The Philippine Deposit Insurance Corporation announced the on-site distribution of claim forms and filing of claims in the following 11 legacy-affiliated banks. In the interest of public service, the PDIC has extended the schedule of distribution of claim forms and receiving of deposit insurance claim. PDIC Executive, Vice President in Charge of Claims, Receivership, and Liquidation said that it has set four regional claims receiving centers to accommodate depositors based in Metro Manila, Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao who missed the deadline. PDIC representatives will be at the designated regional claims receiving center on the periods specified. Depositors may transact with the following regional claims receiving centers nearest their place of residence. PDIC said that depositors may get claim forms and file their claims at any of the regional claims receiving centers on the specified dates during office hours, Mondays to Fridays, except holidays. Depositors with deposit accounts in two or more legacy affiliated banks may file their claims in just one regional claims receiving center nearest their residence. That's all. Thank you.